Our lives were falling apart around us. Our kids were rebelling. Welcome down the rabbit hole, friends. We're here to get into the down and dirty about the new Duggar documentary, Shiny Happy People. Do me a favor and click the like button below and leave me a comment with your thoughts about the clips from the documentary. Episode one starts by letting us know that the Duggar show became popular shockingly fast. You've probably heard of the Duggar family, Jim, Bob, Michelle, and their 19 biological children. It became like a phenomenon really fast. Yes, and there's Cousin Amy right off the bat. Are any of us surprised? I want to name my child Jim Bob. Jim Bob is the man. It turns out people actually really liked Jim Bob, to begin with at least. He was like an oddity. And for many people like down south, it was one of the first times they saw a family somewhat like their own or even like their extended family on TV. I'm Michelle Duggar, baby factory for the Duggar family. And gosh, I just love a split bang. And I'm Jim Bob Duggar. And I spend my time going up to strange women to tell them Christ's plan does not involve birth control. That wasn't part of the documentary. I just added it in for a little levity. Because next, the documentary makes the argument that the IBLP was essentially institutionalizing a method for creating like a patriarchal dominance structure within the family. It isolated families unto themselves through encouraging homeschooling and keeping apart from people who don't believe in what you believe in, right? So of course we saw this on the show with the Duggar as well. They turned every father into a cult leader and franchised spiritual, physical, emotional, psychological abuse. Thank goodness the documentary looks outside of the Duggar family as well. We hear from many well-known people who have grown up in the IBLP or are considered experts in some way about the IBLP, and they let us know what was going on with other families because as I've said before, the Duggars were famous and they have a lot of money. They were like IBLP royalty. And when we're honest with ourselves, we all know that royalty gets treated differently than the average person who would have been involved involved in the institution. So we really need to hear from people who are outside of the Duggar family to understand as much as we can about what happened. There's something entirely different. Homeschooling is kind of the linchpin of this whole project. Instead of learning math, you're learning slut shaming. It's infiltrating into so many people's lives. The goal was to funnel Christian homeschoolers into positions of influence in government. And here comes <laughs> One of the freakiest scenes I've seen. I don't remember it at all from the TLC show, but it's a video of little baby Josie basically being like, instant obedience! <sighs> kind of creeps me out a little bit. It's authoritarian. Women don't have rights. Children break. Instant obedience! That's the society that they're building. Okay, next comes, you know, my most favorite person of all. <laughs> My yoga mother, Jill, <laughs> steps into the scene um, with her husband, Derek. And you can tell, guys, this is very hard for Jill. She talks about not really wanting to do this, not wanting to open old wounds, but feeling like she needs to be a part of the story. I mean, the story is about her, right? My dad was working like three jobs. He was working at a convenience store and he had a car business. And then he had a tow truck service. When I smell that diesel smell, it reminds me of my dad with his sweet tea in his lap, riding like two, one or two of us in the truck next to him up in the cab, bouncing along. And what I see from her is like a very authentic aura of wanting to give her family and her parents the biggest benefit of the doubt. She comes forward saying like basically making sort of like excuses for her parents being like, you know, they they grew up in poverty. My dad grew up in poverty. It was very hard for him. We would find all of the kids eat free places and like we'd just stay there for hours. My dad and mom have like a little bit of pride where it's like, yeah, I think we put them out of business. <laughs> She really shows a huge amount of empathy at the same time speaking honestly about the truth of what happened to her. And I very much respect her for that because I've said from the beginning that I believe Jim Bob and Michelle truly thought they were doing what was best for their kids, even though it became so extreme. I grew up very poor. 
I think it made him feel like he probably had to like grow up a little early and try and like protect his family. I will forever be so proud of Jill. The way that she's able to rise up above all of the BS despite what's happened to her and the difficult relationship she still has within her family. She clearly cares about all of them, especially her parents. He had one sister and her name is Deanna. My brother and I always had a really close relationship and we got along really well. Okay, so now Deanna and Amy, they pop in and they give their two cents about what's going on. Of course, a big part of their rhetoric is like, we didn't really know what was going on. We had a life like very separate from them. We lived down the lane. We would pop over and see what was going on. But we lived our lives like rock and roll. <laughs> Amy even says that. My life was all rock and roll, you know? And Deanna's like, I didn't know what was going on. I was just supportive of them and thinking like, it's so great that they had the show and just thought everything was going great. You know, here I am in this documentary. But once again, they're kind of <laughs> inserted in a place um, where they don't seem to have a lot of information for us. They're just as shocked as the rest of us are um, when everything comes out about the Duggar family. I literally grew up on camera. It is a constructed reality. Like it's it's reality, but it's not. <laughs> the way that I was raised was rock and roll. You know, this is life. And okay, so in my opinion, Amy is like super adorable and fun in this documentary. I really, I found myself liking her. But I have to say that I'm really reserved in my like. I'm holding back. Um, finalizing an opinion about Amy. Uh, she is called Famy on many of the snarker pages, and she inserts herself in a lot of this Duggar documentary stuff um, without maybe having like a lot to say. But then also I've seen her go back and forth um, in a lot of different situations that leave me reserved about what's going on with her. But I do think she's a little bit rock and roll. Watch everything happen. Josh, my big brother, loved being there with my dad. He got to go more than the rest of us because he was the oldest. A lot of the other state representatives named him a little governor. They thought he has a lot of charisma, even from a young age. Okay, this part I really loved because Jill goes on to talk about when her dad was in the House of Representatives and how all of the kids went with her dad to the Capitol um, and actually were on the floor of the House with him at times. And that allegedly... Josh was very much recognized by people around them as being very outgoing and active, and they called him the little governor. But unfortunately, now we all know that this likely contributed heavily to Josh's overinflated view of himself. And this is when <laughs> Jill goes on to describe a situation which can only be thought of as absolutely ridiculous looking back on it, but allegedly Josh went on to create a boys club called Boycott so that they could, um, he and his friends would go and boycott this store down the street, which had started selling pornography. Josh had like a little boys club thing with some of his friends. No rugrats allowed. They named their club Boycott, Boys Christian Outreach Team. Be Skirt, hold up. Wait a minute. What did you say? Josh Duggar started a group to boycott <laughs> alcohol and pornography being sold at like a 7-Eleven down the street. I mean, the irony just never ends with this family. It's crazy. Jill, you should have saved that one for your book for sure. Because the convenience store at the end of our street, I think they started selling it was either alcohol or pornography or something like that. And they were like, we're going to boycott them. So the documentary tells us the Duggars get out of politics, get into showbiz, and they make a hell of a lot of money. That family of eight kids are the Holtz. Father Jim has known Jim Bob for years. Jim Bob Duggar and I grew up together. We went to Shiloh Christian High School together from seventh grade on. And Jim Holt was one of my dad's friends, one of his... Next comes the Holtz. They're sitting on a chair together and Jill introduced them because Jim is one of her dad's ex 
best friends. He was also involved in politics, and I've done a lot of videos about the Holt family if you want to check those videos out and learn more about them. But essentially, Jim and Bobbe <laughs> are letting us know that they were involved with the Duggars, but they were like a little unsure about what was going on with the IBLP. I have to say, I don't believe they're owning up to how much they were into all of this as well. Just my opinion. I was 19 and... And I was 14. Well, we didn't know that. I didn't know that at the time. She was, she was developed, she looked mature. I was told by my cousin that she was 17 or 18, so I didn't know she was that young. Okay, I think it's kind of weird that <laughs> during this interview, Jim is like, yeah, um, Bob Ye and I, we met when she was like 14 and I was 19. But I didn't know at first. I, that's just how it was done back then. I don't know if the documentary people were like, we better like put this into um, the documentary so we don't get called out on it later. Like that people want to say something about the halts. But yeah, I mean, it is kind of creepy. I guess it just is what it is and we keep going with it. We all marry young in Arkansas, you know. Did I tell you we're related? No, I'm just kidding, we're not. <laughs> so anyway. Jim Bob said we need some people there at the ice skating rink at the Jones mm -hmm. Center. One thing that I think is really weird is that Jim Holt and his family, they appeared in one of the tapings of the Duggars show. And here Jim is saying, like, I didn't even really know I was going to be on the show. They're going to be interviewing me. It just like kind of happened. And I was like, what is OK? I guess I'll be involved. And like later, I totally regretted doing it. This doesn't come off as it just doesn't come off as um, true. To me, it doesn't make sense. The Duggars didn't tell you, like, get dressed up, get everyone in the same clothes. We're all going to go to the skating rink and be filmed for this show. I'm sure that you were told that that was going to happen. I just think they're being a little inauthentic. Well, I'll say that Jim seems a little inauthentic to me about that. Um, it's hard for me to believe that they weren't aware. I think that they constantly want to lessen their involvement with all of it. Um, but as I've said, please go back and watch my other videos. I have... Um, a lot of respect for Bobby, Bob Ye. Bye bye. <laughs> um, I think that she did a great job of testifying against Josh and standing up for what was right. So I never want to downplay what she brought to the table for the Duggar girls. Bob said, We need some people there at the ice skating rink at the Jones mm -hmm. Center. And so we said, Yeah, we'll come there and skate. And then they come up and just stuck the camera in our face right off the bat and said, Well, what do you think about this? And I thought, Well, what do I do? And so I. I did a little quick interview, but wished it wasn't And you regret that, time. that now. Yeah, I, I, regret, I regret doing that. The Halts did share some photos I've never seen before of their daughter, Kaylee, who ended up courting Josh for a period of time, and they talk a little bit about that. Over the years, our relationship with him had grown. He was our first daughter's boyfriend, and we had known him since he was a baby. Poor Kaylee. I'm sure she doesn't want to be known for any of this. And I'm sure it's been a huge burden in her life to have it brought up that she was entangled with Josh during a period of time that was really her childhood. I've spoken about this several times before, but I never found the footage of it. But I do remember early on in the specials when they were doing like 14 kids and pregnant again, that there was some video taped segments where Josh had his own like studio video editing room with computers and <laughs> cameras that he was using and, and they portrayed it like Josh loves to make videos of our family. He's the one who really got us into TV. Like he's going to be a director someday. Oh my God. I just, the things that happened. <laughs> my name is Joshua Duggar. I may not be a household name, but you might have heard of my family. We get to see Jen from Fundy Fridays. Most of you, I'm sure, know who she is, but if you don't, you should check out the YouTube channel Fundy Fridays. She does the best videos about the Duggar family. They finally saw themselves represented on TV. We had had Christian programming. Father, we just praise you. Episode one goes on to talk about the IBLP's seven principles and how they were used to create a pyramid of dominance within a household with God being at the top, the father coming next, mother coming underneath dad, and then the children down at the bottom. 
The Basic Seminar, a ministry of the Institute in Basic Youth Conflicts, as a high schooler, Bill Gothard was concerned about the wrong decisions that many of his classmates were making. There's seven non-optional basic principles, but the biggest feature of Gothardism is the authority teaching. Jen talks about how the Duggars and their show were definitely used as a recruiting tool for the IBLP. The Duggars were definitely used as a recruiting tool for IBLP. God has opened up a lot of ministry opportunities for our family. It's not a show. It's really not. It's our life. It really is. And then we get some really good footage explaining Josh Duggar's trajectory from appearing on the show to becoming really popular. Hello. Hello. Doug, how are you? And Josh and Anna are with us in the studio. Yeah. Cut in. Cut in. Okay. Any piece? <laughs> okay, now flip it over. Wow. Oh. Do you know what that means? and being featured in many of the episodes to entering into the political arena by moving to Washington, D.C. and joining a conservative think tank. We have decided to, uh, to accept that, that job in D.C. Josh and Anna appeared on national news stations announcing like pregnancies, figuring out the gender of their babies. We all followed it and fans really bought into the idea that they were a stable, loving couple. It's not unusual or unexpected that someone who's like the golden boy on a reality TV show would also want to go into politics. Hello, I'm Josh Duggar. Two years ago, Josh accepted a high-profile job with the Family Research Council, a deeply conservative lobbying group. The end of episode one is difficult for me to watch because I think it really emphasizes the fact that Jill Duggar Dillard really doesn't want to be here. I kind of don't really want to talk about all that. Um, just because, like... We wish nobody had ever found out yeah, about Yeah, it's really that. hard for me because I'm just like... She doesn't want to have to be giving all these interviews, talking about what happened to her, writing a book. And she's doing it because she feels like she has no choice but to participate in the narrative that's being told about her and has been told about her her entire life. But that in general, she wanted to keep parts of her life private and she feels that it was it would have been fine if they stayed private that they should have been private for the good of herself and the good of her family it's very difficult to watch jill struggle but to be honest she's only a part of this really big story about how the iblp affected so many lives so join me back here tomorrow when we'll look at episode two of shiny happy people it's not unusual or unexpected that someone who's like the golden boy on a reality tv show would also want to go into politics hello i'm josh duggar two years ago josh accepted a high profile job with the family research council a deeply conservative lobbying group